Leaving the bridge, we left the old town behind and headed through the picturesque lesser town which is clustered around Prague Castle. It's quite a climb heading up near Dover Street on foot, especially if it's hot, and there are plenty of cafes you can stop at for refreshment. However, we pressed on and we were rewarded with lovely views over the city when we finally reached the top. From here, you can see most of the city with its population of 1.4 million. This was the historical capital of Bohemia, and since 1992, the historic centre of Prague has been included in the UNESCO list of World Heritage Sites. Be aware that you have to go through security checks to enter the castle grounds, and there can be a queue at busy times. Prague Castle is the largest ancient castle in the world and dates from the 9th century. The castle buildings represent virtually every architectural style of the last millennium and the last major rebuilding was carried out in the second half of the 18th century. There are over 1.8 million visitors annually and it is now the official residence of the President of the Czech Republic. Presidential guards guard the three main entrances to Prague Castle and are part of a special army division. The guards are changed hourly. If you're here at midday, you might catch the longer ceremonial changing of the guard with a parade accompanied by music. You can walk around some parts of the castle complex for free, but we bought a ticket allowing us access to historic buildings within the Prague Castle complex. The ticket included access to Golden Lane, which takes its name from the goldsmiths who lived there in the 17th century. The lane comprises 11 historic houses, inside which period scenes have been created to show the life of the artisans who once worked, ate, drank and slept in them. In its early years, the lane consisted of even smaller dwellings, but as they fell into disrepair, they were replaced by the houses we see today. If you venture upstairs, you'll see an extensive collection of medieval armoury and weapons displayed in the long corridor which runs along the back of the houses. We also visited the old royal palace. Vladislav Hall was used for coronations, banquets and jousting from the 16th century and there are various other adjoining chambers within the palace. For example, the Bohemian Chancellery which was the office of the royal governors of Bohemia. There's a great view of the outside of the castle from here. At the other end of the hall is the old diet. This was used for sessions of the Supreme Provincial Court. A nearby spiral staircase leads up to the new land rolls room, the old repository for land titles, where the walls are covered with the clerk's coats of arms. Close to the old palace is the early Baroque facade of St George's Basilica, which originated as the second church at Prague Castle. Inside, the church is mostly Romanesque. The original early 10th century church was wooden, but that's long gone. The present Romanesque appearance of the church, with main apse and two steeples, dates back to a reconstruction carried out after a devastating fire which occurred in 1142. In complete contrast to the rest of the interior, as you leave the church you pass through an early 18th century Baroque chapel. Not far away, and dominating the centre of the castle complex, is St Vitus Cathedral. The first church on this site was founded in 930 and the present day Gothic Cathedral is actually the third religious building on this site. Construction of this church began on the 21st of November 1344 and was finally completed nearly 600 years later. The entire building process came to a halt with the beginning of the Hussite War in the first half of the 15th century and a great fire in 1541 heavily damaged the cathedral. Through most of the following centuries, the cathedral stood only half finished. Work picked up again in the 19th and 20th centuries and was finally finished in 1929. In fact, the entire western half of the cathedral is a neo-Gothic addition and the earlier eastern half only reached as far as the transept and the Great South Tower. You will see some Renaissance and Baroque additions to this cathedral, but it's mainly Gothic. In fact, the Cathedral of St Vitus had a tremendous influence on the development of late Gothic style in Central Europe, including the Stephansdom Cathedral in Vienna and Strasbourg Cathedral. Mm -hmm.